the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Thou art war. Did at war, O Lord, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, and power, O for thou art created. All things are for thy pleasure, they are well-created. Father Almighty Jesus, we appreciate you this day. We thank you for your cancer. We thank you for your love. We thank you for everything concerning us, concerning your purpose for our lives. Blessed be thy name for the day. Thank you for a beautiful day, beautiful week, beautiful month, and a beautiful year. Your word said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief has come to steal to kill and to destroy. But you are on a different mission and you have come to give life, to give it in abundance. And you always say the expectations of the righteous shall never be cut off. What are our expectations? Our expectations are not what the thief has come to do, but what the life giver has come to do for us. And therefore, Lord, we are standing upon your word, the everlasting word of God. Father, blessed be thy name. Thank you for your promises. And thank you for what you have done for us on the cross of Calvary. Father, thank you for you have not changed your mind concerning your people. We appreciate you. We thank you for another Sunday, another week, another month. And another year to you be all glory. Thank you, Lord. For we can do all things to Christ that strengthened us. Thank you for a new strength this week. Thank you for a new visitation. Thank you for taking away shame and disgrace from our lives. Thank you for going before us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for dining with us. Thank you, Jesus, for visiting us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit in us. Holy Spirit, we bless you. Thank you, everlasting Father. As we are going to the world today, speak through us. Bless your people. Give us understanding. May we not perish with the world. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this day program. If you have joined us, please indicate you are here. Love the program, share the program, subscribe to our channel, especially our YouTube channel, and share this for evangelism, for total deliverance of the people. People are suffering, people are hopeless, people are frustrated, people are confused, people are at the crossroad of faith because of what goes on around them. But the Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Why are we coming out all the time? 
at least once a week that we normally come out twice every Sunday that is on our YouTube channel and Facebook on Heart to Heart Talk just to encourage people we are in the last days perilous time terrible time trouble times we are to wake up the slumber we are to encourage those that are confused those that do not know they are left to their rights people who goes about wandering about people who goes to church ever learning but they didn't get to the point of salvation people always in church jumping around paying money for their salvation people who are hopeless because of them God by his grace has selected some few people to rise up and encourage us this is one of them here we are to encourage <coughs> you that our God is alive that our God can do all this that our God has not been true with us yet he loves us generally John 3 16 for God so loved the world even when we didn't know him even when we are lost in the world he paid the price of our redemption but do you know that many many people didn't know what salvation is all about many many preachers of the gospel today they were never students before they became teachers teachers of war teachers of frustration teachers of the law that has been done away with so this morning we are here to discuss about what is total salvation total salvation not half salvation not one quarter salvation what is the meaning of total salvation the word of god says ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free many people they call themselves christian they were born into christianity but they were still living in one fear or the other salvation is a total package not need anything needed with a package of salvation salvation is not because of how much you are paying in the church that will make your Jew to recognize you that will make you to be depending on your Jew that will make you to be de to be looking unto your Jew and not unto Jesus Jesus is the author and the finish of our faith Jesus is a true friend that died gave his life on the cross of Calvary for our sins so what are you still paying for those sins you have committed and you have confessed and be converted from we shall together read luke chapter one luke chapter one and from verse 70 let's start reading from verse 70 luke one from 70 or 69 let's start from 69 let's make it from 69 that will make it better for us let me adjust my notes from verse 69 yes take your bible open it and read together as if God is good to some set of people and is not good to you. What makes me better than you? Is it not the word of God? The knowledge of the word of God. Knowledge. 
Knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. What makes people to suffer? What makes you a slave under a pastor? Lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And what is making me to come out and let you know that Jesus paid the price. <coughs> the same price for you and I. Not a different price to different people. What is total salvation? From verse 69 of Luke chapter 1. He has raised up a horn <coughs> of salvation for us. A horn of salvation for us. In the house of his servant, David. Just as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets in ancient times. Ancient times. His holy prophets. So in these last days, we do not have holy prophets again. No. We have prophets in every family. Prophets in every home, in every fellowship, in every place where people gather together. And the type of prophecy is to encourage one another. Behold, I am with you. Behold, I have not been true with you. Behold, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Because the testimony of Jesus, the testimony of the great achievement of Jesus is the gift of prophecy. So, but before Christ came and gave us a package of salvation, through his only prophets, the mouth of his only prophets, it has been prophesied. Salvation from our enemies. Let me read 70 again. Just as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets in ancient times. Salvation from our enemies and from the clutches of those who hate us. All around salvation. That is the reason why Jesus came. That is the reason why you have come to give your life to Jesus. To be saved from all around enemies. Not part of your enemies. Today the devil slap your right cheek. Uh, you went to prophet so so so. Tomorrow the other side, the enemy slap you. You, you now decided you have to consult the latest prophet you heard about in town and you are spending money. They use your money to start business. They become multi-millionaire. They become businessmen through your tithe and offering. Through the little you have that you don't know how to use it and become rich like them. For how long will you continue doing that? What is total salvation? What you go about is like you are nothing but half-baked bread. Because you have messed up yourself with the multitude. What is sufficient for you is no more sufficient for you. Because you have, they have reduced your knowledge to nothing. To a zero level. Knowledge that is sufficient. It's supposed to be on the increase on a daily basis. Knowledge about the goodness of God. Knowledge about the reason why Jesus came down to die for you and I. A true friend that gave his life a ransom. That said it is finished. With his death, he said it's finished. You said it's not finished. Every cockroach you see in your house. You want to go to the harvest. Turn to prophets. Turn to pastors. There are too many. They hinder you from getting to Christ. From having the knowledge of God. I watch 
probably one of them yesterday. A woman stinking through the attack of the enemy. Somebody warned her, don't go to that place. So she came on her own and she was asking the man, the self-made man of God, help me, deliver me. Jesus, I refuse her. I refuse to die, I will not die. He said, hey, it's Jesus that will heal you or me. Hey, my God. He declared that it's not Jesus that will heal you, it's me that will heal you. He was referring to himself. They've taken away the knowledge of the people. And he was telling the woman, Yahoo, Yahoo, they have done something with you and they have finished you. You are now smelling. The woman shouted, yes, that is the reason why I said I, 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 I will come to you so that you will deliver me. But you have known me for a long time. You have not been coming. He said, yes, I came here once. But my friend said I must not come. He said, you see now, you see, he was bragging. He is now becoming savior. That is the position of many pastors today. They have turned themselves to be pastors over those that are following them. And Jesus said, looking unto me, the author and the finisher of your faith. They have diverted the faith of the, their followers to themselves. For how long will this continue? The reason why God has selected few people, common, uncommon people, ordinary people, people who are not known in the society, to put us on check, to call us back, and to lead us to Christ. We are talking about total salvation, complete salvation, salvation without fear, salvation without sickness that will lead to death, salvation that when you are being tempted or you are passing through any sort of temptation, you know there is a way out. Salvation that will give you assurance that when you are passing through water, that deep water will not swallow you. Salvation that will let you remember that when you pass through fire, it's just for a short time. It's not going to consume you. Salvation that when you are in any situation, I remember when I was preparing this message this morning, I, uh, uh, the issue of uh, Jonah came to my mind. Where Jonah said, after he's been thrown, he, he, he instructed them, throw me into the sea. I am the source of your problem because of my disobedience. But there's a solution. Throw me into the sea. There will be calmness in the boat. They did likewise. And God that Jonah served prepared a big fish. Not a small fish. Not an hungry fish that swallowed Jonah. This is where I'm going. Jonah now said, in the belly of the fish, I now call upon my God. If you don't know the God that you are serving, if you cannot beat your chest, that the God that you are serving is the God of all creation. Hey, I pity you people will mislead you. And they will force you to see them as your God. Because they are the ones you can see. And it, it, it takes spiritual eyes, spiritual understanding to know the true living God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are talking about total salvation, complete salvation, whereby you can stand and tell anybody, I am not owing you anything. I owe Jesus all things, all my life, everything about me. I surrendered to him. 72. He has dealt mercifully with our fathers. I remember this holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father, Abraham. He has given us the privilege since we have been rescued from our enemies' clutches to serve him without fear. So there is no fear in salvation. 
There is fear in religion. There is fear in whatever fellowship you belong to, that your life is limited. You see? No fear in salvation. You see? In holiness, without fear in holiness and righteousness. In his presence all our days. And child, you will be called a prophet of the most high. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. To give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of our God, merciful compassion. The dawn from on high will visit us. Look at the greatest prophet of his time, which was John the Baptist. I, I, I used to remember when he was preaching, telling people that were rushing to him in the wilderness. His abode was inside the wilderness. People were still going there. The word of God left the city, located John the Baptist in the wilderness. All the big people that were living in the city, the word of God never visited them. But it was Jonah who resided inside the wilderness. And he was, he was surprised as he was seeing people. A true prophet cannot be preaching like that and people will bring their money to him. He said, who has warned you to run away from the trouble of this hour? Who has warned you? Because people are running away from the city, coming to the wilderness. And all of a sudden, in order to fulfill his ministry, he now saw the lamp of God. He now saw Jesus. And he pointed to Jesus. He never pointed to himself. He now told the people he would decrease while Jesus will, must increase. Is that the gospel we have today? John the Baptist finished his ministry. His ministry was to introduce Jesus, the Savior of the world, of the people, those whom he has predestinated to be saved. We are talking about total salvation. The same package to everybody. You work on your own. I am working on my own. I am not true yet, but I've never been disappointed because it has never failed me one day. We are marching onto victory, onto the promised land. Work at your salvation. Prove to the world that you are genuinely saved and a package has been handed over to you. A prophet of the Most High in person of John the Baptist. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. The same message to John the Baptist. Are you the one coming that we are? No, he said, no. <laughs> I am just here to prepare the way. I am just here to show to the people the Savior. To give his people knowledge of salvation. Knowledge of salvation. Is that what your pastor, your geo is giving to you? Knowledge of salvation? That look, I am just a servant. I am just to show you, point you to the cross. Whatever you need, is able to meet all your needs. Is able to take care of you. But not today. What we are doing, we are referring people to ourselves. We so have too many people that we don't even know what to do with them. We don't even know how to help them. We don't even have solution to their problems. And these people, they kept on coming, bringing their families, confessing that they belong to our, our denomination. Now, denomination without Jesus Christ. Denomination where we enslave people. Denomination where we have turned to business center. Denomination where we have no solution to people's problems. And these people are dying ignorantly. In numbers. Total salvation. 
to give his people knowledge of salvation. We are not giving them knowledge of salvation. We are showing them the way to make money. We are showing them, you know, the way to, to have the material things of this world. Full package of salvation. We are not giving to them. To give his people knowledge of salvation. And if there's any price we need to pay, like John paid the price for speaking the truth, for trying to correct the king that went wrong. He was beheaded. One of the wives of the king was angry with, with him. But in our own case, we want people to love us by force, by fire. We want to play along. The, Muslim, the, the husband is a Muslim. He's still our friend. The wife is a pastor in our church. They were all playing the same game with people's lives. A package of salvation. Through the forgiveness of their sins. You see? A full package of salvation. Forgiveness of our sins inclusive. <laughs> forgiveness of our sins is inclusive in a package of salvation. Your sins I shall never, never again remember. But the prophets are still remembering you of your sins. You know what you have done? Lawlessness everywhere. Evils of the increase. This generation freely, they are shooting gone. They are threatening themselves with God, cutting themselves with cutlers. Free fights on the streets. Kidnapping everywhere. There was a story yesterday. A principal got a child of another family. Killed that child. And when they were praying, it would be the one that would be comforting them, encouraging them that she's coming back. Cut the young girl to pieces and bury them in different places. What a rubbish is that? People of Nineveh, they were never as worst as this generation is worst. But the mercy of the Lord. The salvation that was paid, full paid for, is still at work. We have pushed God to the world. That the word of God says, it repented me that I made man. Won't you come out from the, the cursed world? In Revelation chapter 12, the devil that has deceived the whole world. Cost me the world because Satan has come down to you with great anger. You should wash your environment. What do you see around? The presence of darkness. And Satan is the master in the kingdom of darkness. Won't you fight the last battle to come out from among them? Don't you think it's a risk for you to be in the Miss of multitude, where you have labored and labored, yet you have not gotten it right. When are you going to get it right? Let's go to another passage of the Bible. Glory to Jesus. We have read 69 to 76. John chapter 8. The Gospel of St. John, <coughs> chapter 8, 32 and 36. If you are not getting it right, you better get it right once and for all. If you have missed your road, you better retrace your steps back. <coughs> if a prodigal son, you have gotten to the level of eating with swine, you better Make up your mind. Put off your pride. Your pride, yes. Put it off. 
and return back to you the right place and start the normal right way to Jesus, to the cross of Calvary. Yes. John chapter 8, 32 and 36. 32 and 36. Glory to Jesus. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you are claiming you have been saved without knowing the truth, there is no freedom in that package of salvation that your Jew has handed over to you. You still have in that package slavery till you will die and end up in hellfire. There are many pastors that are repackaging packages of salvation for their members. They remove some, they add evil and sorrow, sickness, troubles of life, and they will be teaching you all the wrong teaching that will make you comfortable in your sorrow and a life that is not fruitful. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added. Instead of them to lead you into the kingdom of God, kingdom of righteousness, kingdom of peace, whereby after you have labored, you can now be thanking God in the kingdom of Jesus, kingdom of salvation, total package of salvation. They have removed some of those packages because they are working for Satan. Come out from among them. Because a ministry is worldwide, doesn't make it ministry to the kingdom of God. You are on your own. It is not your Jew that died for you. No Jew can die for anybody. They were talking about one of the big Jews yesterday that one of his boys who called him father so one of his sons got sick and died then they were blaming him he said am i your relation what do i have to do with caring for you not to die the pastor jesus will never talk like that he's the one inviting everybody he's the one that gave his life a ransom for us let me continue. You shall know the truth. Oh, let me read from verse 30. Truth and freedom. Truth and freedom. They were in the package of that salvation. You will never be satisfied where, where the, the truth is not being spoken. You won't feel okay where they are not telling you the truth. Where they have diluted the word of God. Where they have turned salt and sugar. You know, in replacements of the, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is not in honey. It's not in sugar and salt. But they now ask you to put salt at the entrance of your house. Or you carry salt to the markets. As people will be marching on the salt, you will be happy. You will, be, you will have everything you wanted. For how long will you do it? If you die in this ignorance of yours, you have missed it here in the, in the world and in heaven. You will never have a taste of that place. That will not be your portion because I am not here to lay costs on you, but to open your eyes and to warn you if you have missed it, reverse back. The Bible says we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is there a day you remember you made a U-turn from following man to following Jesus? You have been following man. You have been worshipping man in ignorance. You have been deceived. Because the whole world has been deceived. As he was saying these things, 
Many believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You continue in continuation of your, your faith, your confession, continuation makes you to walk on your salvation. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. We are descendants of Abraham. They answered him. That is 33. Let's come to 36. 36 says, Therefore, don't forget, as you have been following Jesus, you continue in breaking up the bread, digging deep into the word of God, seeking for the truth. You will never be satisfied where there's no truth. When I gave my life to Jesus in 1985, February, I can now discern the truth from falsehood. My antenna was <laughs> so correct. So where there's no truth, I don't waste time until I discovered that the truth is in the Word of God. Have you found the Word of God? Because we have to find the Word of God. There's no truth anywhere. And any fellowship where the truth is not being spoken, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I assure you, 30, let me read 36. Therefore, if the soul set you free, you really will be free. What is the meaning of that? My brother, my sister, the son is still the word of God. If the word of God has not set you free, if the son of God shall set you free, thou shall be free indeed. <coughs> your salvation, your total salvation, is the knowledge of the word of God you have, or you know. Therefore, if the Son of God shall set you free, if I've not gotten to the Son of God, that is, to the root of the Word of God, to have better understanding that there is no confliction between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament is just the continuation of the Old Testament. Jesus said, I have not come to destroy the Old I've come to fulfill, but we are having it difficult to understand what fulfillment means. Where he said he has taken away the first and established the second. Jesus is the second and the last. Is the first. Is the Alpha and the Omega. Is the old and is the new. But he's just telling you, I've changed my address from the old address to the new address. I will say, no, we are staying here. We prefer to be killing chicken and to be killing ram and to be shedding blood. And to be looking unto prophets for our problems. We don't want to come to that land of freedom, of salvation, whereby we will not labor for another to eat. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. All your labor, all your struggle in life, you will just get to enjoy, mm -hmm. and the pastor will tell you what you cherish most in your life. As if you are the devil that came from heaven, that was the throne from heaven to the earth. You should go and bring everything. Go and sell your house and bring the money. I'm robbers. The thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And at the end of the day, you will die. They will bury you. And they will still continue living. Why? Because they were agent of darkness. They were working for Satan. Satan is the killer. They bring you to a slaughter. Because you have now accepted the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Now they allow their master to kill you, destroy you. And they will continue living because the more people they bring, the more they will be celebrated in the kingdom of darkness. Mm. And you call them Babajiyo, Mamajiyo, witches and wizards. 
the kingdom of Satan. Hallelujah. Total salvation. Total salvation is totally dependent on the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. No addition. There's satisfaction in it. There's peace in the kingdom. In the package of salvation. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's hope. Package. Nothing is lack. But the word says you shall know the truth. There's truth to everything about the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Stupid arguments don't involve yourself in it. I overheard somebody who is coming out newly saying the word of God, the Bible is not the word of God. I don't know what he was trying to tell the world, but I just put such teaching aside. Uh, the Bible, Jesus said, the word has spoken to you, their life and spirit. So it is not the physical Bible that is the word of God, but the spirit behind it. What God wants you to see, he wants you to see that the, 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 there's a spirit realm. That if you can follow precept by precept the word of God, you will get there. If you can be submissive to the right person that God has chosen, not the one that is calling people to himself. Look at John the Baptist. If some people coming, they will ask one you. Why are you running away at the last minute? It doesn't pacify them. You know, to bring them that to play along with them so that they can get what they have. As we have it around today. I don't want to offend them. I want to play along. Because this one is rich. I can get one billion from this one. I can get two billion from this one. This one is in charge of the money for the estates. Can you imagine a pastor telling one senator, you want to go for governorship? Go. And when you get to the uh, government house, remember the church, will come back to the church. That is, bring the money, loot the treasury. Destruction by the devil. Satan that has deceived the whole world. The whole world, they are on the way to destruction. Will you go with them? Won't you come out from among them and stand alone with God? They that know they are God. They will not be destroyed. They that know their God cannot be destroyed with the world. Only 10% God is waiting for. See all the years it has been taking him. Because in Zechariah chapter 13, God said, I will allow. Because without him allowing, nobody can destroy. I will allow the tutor to be killed. Those who refuse knowledge, those who refuse the truth, okay, go your way. They want that, they will pass through fire because it's not going to ease. Be easy with them. How? How can you be in this kind of world where nobody can be trusted? Where a mother colliding with another child, a mother of two, saying, instead of dying in poverty, let us use your brother, slaughter him, so that we can get money. Why can't she surrender herself for the children to live and survive? Selfishness. Where can we turn to? You want to turn to uncle? You want to turn to your mother? You want to turn to your father? They will frustrate your faith. They will bring you down. They will march on you to the graveyard. They will mislead you. They cannot help you. Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus can save at the bad people. Jesus, only him. Even your wife that doesn't know the truth cannot help you. It takes the truth to go to any length with you. Knowledge of the truth 
Whatever you are doing that is not based on, on, on the truth you know, we are talking about total salvation. Total salvation doesn't permit someone to look back because you will remember the word of God that no one puts his hand oh, on the plow and look back at his feet. You don't want to miss that place. That place is not easy to get there. But if you have made up your mind, I am telling you, nothing will separate you from getting there because Jesus has made the way for you. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Your life is hid in God in, through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Do you have that total package that doesn't depend on any personality? Total package of salvation is what we are talking about today. The Son of God is the Word of God. Because Many people have been confused today. If the Son of God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. So instead of finding the Son of God, they find the Jew. They, they find the, the notable preacher. They find the, the best prophet of our time. The best prophet of the world that has been, he said, has been beheaded. And he had handed over to Jesus. People are still looking for prophets in this end time. <laughs> The testimony of Jesus is the gift of prophecy. Jesus is the end of prophecy. Is the end of the law. If anybody is asking you, you have to bow seven times before you worship God. That is the law. Some religious people, they were happy for people bowing down. And some people, they now, they, they, they worship God. They first bow down seven times. They bow down, then they rise up. They put everything together. And they think they are living life. You are not living life. You are living a contaminated life. A hopeless life. You are on your way to the pit of destruction. I am here to warn you. I am here like John the Baptist of this generation. I don't have friends. Jesus is a true friend. I don't have to compromise my faith with you. As long as I am telling you the truth. Because it's only the truth. You better look up to him. People you are looking unto, they will disappoint you. They will fail you. They will disappoint you. They will speak evil about you. They will ridicule you. Why you must see honey? And they will see they will laugh. And you think they are your friends. They are not your friends. Jesus is the only true friend. It's a friend that will not disappoint you. It's a friend that will not deny you in the days of evil. So, let's read John the Gospel, chapter 1, and verse 14. Because of our time, the Son of God is the Word of God. Knowing the doctrines of your church, or of your Jew, and big members of your church and society cannot save you. In our church, our Geo said, in our church, we can't go this far. In our church, ah, we believe in title because if we didn't pay tithe, things would be tight for us. And you have put your mind on the tithe, not on Jesus Christ. That is not a complete salvation. That is a, a diluted salvation. That is a, a, a salvation that has been repackaged, a repackaged salvation. <laughs> so many churches they feel a package salvation you see in some people uh, some places different doctrines different beliefs different things they were practicing it's not by the works of righteousness Jesus by our own righteousness no <coughs> Jesus righteousness he completed he did it all he finished it a complete salvation, a package that has not been repackaged. So many things happening around us. They are just telling us how it is in the spirit realm. You will see when they bring a bag of rice to sell in the market, they have, you know, removed a, 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 like a cutter. And they are now selling the rest as a whole bag. That is how it is in the spirit realm. The package that 
Jesus handed over. As a matter of fact, so many pastors, they've never graduated from the school of Jesus. They don't want to be patient to get to that level whereby they can be bold of if the Son of God shall set you free. The Son of God is not man. The Son of God is the Word of God. If the Word of God shall set you free, thou shalt be free indeed. How can you be free indeed? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the Word of God. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh. The Word of God became flesh, living among us. But we are playing with him, we are touching him as a master. One day he said to his disciples, well, Who do people think that the Son of Man is? Who do you think Jesus is? He asked them the question. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter said, You are the Son of the Most High God. Others said, You are the people, say you are Elijah. You are uh, John the Baptist that came down, you know, you, you, you replace, you change your name, or such. Many people are confused today. So they don't know the way. And that is why they have to join secret societies so that they can bring solution to people's problems. People are not seeking for total salvation. With a package of total salvation, my brother, my sister, you are independent. You are your own. You have free access to heaven. When you call upon him, he will answer you. He said, call upon me in the days of trouble. I am there for you. But your pastor will tell you you have to fast seven days. After the seven days, you have to go 24 days. After that, you have to go three months. After that, in fact, there is a regular one that everybody... It's not like that, that the Holy Spirit touch everybody individually. We have sufficient Holy Spirit. John chapter 2, 28, he said in the last days, he has said this end time, long before Jesus Christ became man. He has said in the end, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But today, we are worshiping few people that we believe they are the one that the Holy Spirit fall upon. <laughs> so they are the only one that I have said. And they are now telling us they are close to God. Unless you come to me, and your prayer cannot be answered. Can you see the one that was boasting yesterday? That you, you are saying, Jesus, you will not die. It's not by confession that you will not die. Ah, you are, you are about to die. That one now change. And he, he, she started saying, Obele, he called the name, that, that evil guy. Please help me, let me not die. Odubiji. Uh -huh. Let me not die. I shook my head like this. My people perish. Not only perishing, my people suffer. Many people are suffering today. Satan inflict them with all sorts of sicknesses. Making them to go about, making their confession ineffective. Because before you can confess, you ought to have believed. David, uh, the evangelist of the Bible, he said, I have found thy word and I've eaten thy word. Thy word is as sweet as honey in, in my heart. The joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. Have you tasted it? When you have the joy of salvation, when you remember what he did for you on the cross of Calvary, when you remember the day you turned back from doing what you like to pleasing God, there's no how, how you will not have the joy of salvation. There's no how you will not be happy. When the prodigal son decided to return back to his father. And he was afraid how the father would handle his case. Unknowingly for him, the father was expecting him back. 
the father asks for the best calf to be slaughtered for him and celebrate him. The father said, this my son has been lost and now found. You don't have to see yourself as a lost child of God and decide to return in your closet. You don't need any altar. You see with your spiritual eyes. You connect him in the spirit. Say, Father, I've missed it. I am wrong. I thought I was in the best fellowship. Different kinds of fellowship. Different kinds of doctrine. Different kinds of ministers. That they cannot even correct themselves. There are some ministers unless they sleep with every young lady in their fellowship. They cannot have a crowd. There is no amount of noise you make. Those people, they were in their already camp. They were already blind. They were already blindfolded. They were already, you know, to the, 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 the time of destruction, they were there following them blindly. The thief has come to stay to kill and to destroy. But Jesus has come that we may have life in abundance. There's life in the package of salvation. There's no death in the pot of salvation. No death there. There's life. When it is not life, it is the devil that is showing you I am still here. <laughs> I have not released you. You are still in my camp. Yeah, I'm still here. Just to show you that you can rise up. You can rise up and tell the devil, I am not for you and for Jesus. Jeremiah 15. So what is in John chapter 114? I've read it. And the word became flesh, lives among us. So when you eat the word of God, for the word of God to set you free, the word of God will be part and parcel of your life. When you are on bed, the word of God will be coming out of your mind. When you are at work, you will be, you'll be remembering the word of God. The word of God will be part of you because he dwelt among us. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Be rich in the word of God. Reading the Bible every time without understanding is falsehood. Digest the word of God. Make the word of God part of your life. Read with understanding. Read with the, Holy, the mind of the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. Total salvation, total, <laughs> not half big Christian, half big Christianity. Any Christianity without seeking for, you know, help from the herbalists, from the prophets. The prophets and the herbalists, they were together. Because the, the prophets that do not carry the testimony of Jesus, there was even a particular herbalist, I think it was a play. Somebody came to him and he handed over the Bible to the person. He said, there's nothing he can do. Go and read this word of God. And the man was surprised. It was in uh, one of the Hebrew play. But that is the truth. He said, they themselves, they have a little, they are confused. But because people kept on coming to them. And those people you see in Agbada, you see in color, you see dressing, you know, looking attractive. They are not better than the herbalists. The difference is that the herbalists, they still dress rough. They still paint their eyes. They still look like, they look fearful. So that you can be afraid of them. They are empty. They are stinking. Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 15. Verse 16. I read. Permit me from here. Sister says, your words were found. <laughs> you better look for the lost words in your life. What is missing in your life? The word of God. When the word of God is part and parcel of your life, there will be no place for the enemy <laughs> to dwell in you. Your words were found. I ate them. Your words became a delight to me and the joy of my heart. What keeps me going? 
what makes me alive. When I remember the time I gave my life to Jesus, nobody need to tell me. People thought it was over for me. People thought he was coming back. Not, not coming back as he left. He was coming back as dead person or as a madman. He was coming back as a wretched person. He was coming back. At, oh, I okay. When I was young, before he 24, I was already having one two car. You see, I bought one. I sold it. I bought another one. Now, you think? That was the best God could have done for me. No, I was having everything as a young man. But <laughs> I don't know that Yoruba says someone who has not visited somebody's uh, farm, a father's farm, would think, oh, this place is the best. But today, when I look back to fellow people that were in that group, to the glory of God, I can look back and say, Father, thank you. I've not miss my way. The prodigal son realized he had missed it. He realized things were better for him in his father's house. He realized he was just outside suffering. But to the glory of God, since I left the camp of the enemy, the camp of Satan, I've never regretted my life. I can beat my chest and say, look at the word of God. He said, your words became a delight to me and the joy of my heart, for I am called by your name. Lord God of hosts, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Let me see, do we still have one chapter and close? That is, the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am not being called by a Christian name alone. I am not being known by wearing white. Why inside of me? <laughs> I am ugly. <laughs> Why inside, inside of me I am dying? Why inside of me every oh, oh, what what is around me? All things are dying, falling down. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Oh, many people deceive themselves. When I look at so many people, they look good outside, but on the inside, they are just like a dead person. I have a friend who we grew together in the same religion. On the on his uh, WhatsApp uh, page, he put the picture, the plague where he was being awarded. Uh, one of the religious setup I shook my head <laughs> uh, for your contribution in the uh, Christianity of our uh, area. Mm. Let me tell you, and everything around him falling down. The uncompleted house his father built before he died is living there. Later on, the wife died. Before the wife died, the wife saw a picture of heaven and he ran mad. Because seeing the picture of heaven and you are still in the midst of these people, they will destroy you. At the end, the, the woman died. I was unable to attend the burial. But I, I, I tried to reach out to the husband. Things are not working for him. This is what the devil can do. The devil will make you think you have gone too far. Where will you turn to that? It happened to me. I said then, where am I going to start from? Start from anywhere. Make sure you start where you will end where. We are talking about total salvation. Total salvation starts from where you are starting and to the place it's taking you to. You are not going to miss your way when you have the total salvation. If, as you are listening to me today, I want to tell you what the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. That most packages of salvation we have ordered up to, they have been repackaged by the founders of those churches. 
And those repackaged salvation cannot take you anywhere. Will disappoint you. And at the end, God forbid you will not bite your finger. Say, eh? Hey? So, this is fake. All fake. They have distracted you. You couldn't see the inside of the package you are holding on to. Disappointment is being repackaged in your package of salvation. Frustration. Troubles of life. They've engaged you with troubles of life till the end of your life. And this is what you are battling with. This is what you are struggling with all your days of life. I've tried to reach out to this, my friend. We grew together. I am not happy anytime I see him. But what can I do? Talk to him. Try to relate with him well. Try to show love to him. When one is in the camp of the devil, you'll be counting years of your lost unknowingly. Why you would think, oh, we have gone too far. We are the best. The world is celebrating us. Jesus said, Woe unto you when people are praising you. The same way they did to the false prophets. Praising them in their evil, in their wickedness. But when they reject you, for my name's sake, blessed art thou. Finally, I mean finally, let's read Psalm 119. Don't forget, we are talking about total salvation. What will make you better than your enemies? Don't forget, the word of God says, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, try all the best of your. That is, if you have gotten the right package, you. If they have not removed some things out of the package of salvation and repackaged it to you, because this is what the Holy Spirit told me today. That most packages, so many people are holding on to, they have been repackaged. And that is why there's nothing you can tell them. Like when God called me in 1982, according to Isaiah chapter 6, he said, go and tell them. Just for telling them sick, they are not going to. So, whenever I remember that passage of the Bible, I just, that is why most of the time I wait for them. Because this God has known the end from the beginning. Before he's sending anybody. And that is why those whom, who claim that God sent them, they know that the people are stubborn. They know they cannot change easily. They will have to go and get sham. They will have to go and use a little boom so that they control, manipulate, maneuver over their lives. Repackage salvation is what many people are working with and it will not take them anywhere. The joy they have is the joy like the harvest time. You know in the harvest time it's like you are winning a lottery. A man in uh, England won 100 million within a short while, lavish everything. Yes, it was what he never suffered for. He won't know how to keep it. You see, this is what many people are living by. The joy uh, 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 like of the harvest time. You know, once a while, joy. But the joy of the Lord is an everlasting joy. Joy unlimited. Joy without sorrow. Joy that even when sadness wants to come, you tell sadness, you show the, the, uh, that sadness, the back door. Oh yeah, you came in through here, go the other way. The word of God says, when the enemy come like the flood of water, the spirit of the Lord will raise his standard against them. You have all these promises in your hearts. The word of God dwells in us richly. So there is no situation that comes that the word of God will not remind you. That this thing you are saying, they are like the Egyptians you see today. By this time tomorrow, it shall be no more. Are you there, brother and sister? Find out that package of salvation you are holding on to. Has it not been falsified? Has it not been repackaged? 
by leading you into error. That salvation, that, that thing you are holding on to, assurance of salvation, do you really have it? You better check it if it's possible for you to open and check it. Check your life. Count your blessings and see what God has done for you. Count your sorrows and see what the devil is doing in your life so that you know how to rise up and challenge the enemy. And go back to where that package has been, you know, repackaged for you. Throw it back at there and start all over with Jesus. Psalm 119 from verse 97. Psalm 119 verse 97 to 120. That's where we are going to stop today at 7. How I love your teaching. Your teaching is talking about the word of God. Teaching is no more in our churches today. Do you know in some fellowship center, they don't even have time for Bible study again. They only appear in church on Sunday. Hey, hey. Is that how you started? You started well. You are ending badly. It's, it's a terrible thing. This, these are the works of Satan for this end time. How I love your teaching. Bible teaching. Bible study is better. The garden of Bible study is better than the Sunday worship. Satan doesn't appear where the, the true teaching is being done. But where people gather together to come and show their new dress, to come and show, you know, their body, to come and show the tight skirt they are wearing, that will bring out the shape of their body, to, to attract the loose men and the pastors in the church. You see, Sunday worship, hallelujah, people, they don't like teaching. He said, how I love your teaching. It is my meditation all day long. Your command makes me wiser than my enemies. That is the instruction of the Bible. The instruction of the Word of God. The instruction by the Holy Spirit. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Wiser than my enemies. For it is always with me. I have more insight than all my teachers. Is it? All these years you have been in that fellowship, you have been in that religion, you have been in that church. You remain follow follow under your pastor. But the writer of this says, I have more insight than all my teachers. You cannot ask questions because you have no insight than your teachers. Because the same thing they are teaching you, the same wrong doctrine they are teaching you, and they teach something different outside where they get money and they make you slave here. I've given a, a testimony of a preacher who was telling his uh, other fellow young ministers how he came to the city empty. Do you know that one of the people he was teaching, I was to travel here and uh, he called me and said, a certain king, through the pastor, he got to know that king wanted to buy three pojo cars. Now, I can't forget, I never knew that the king wanted two cars. The third one was for him. Okay, and he wanted the two pojo car from Germany, uh, uh, no, Netherlands, I think from Netherlands. Now, then he won the right hand, which was a, a, a better uh, age, you know, modern age than the one that is from Netherlands. Okay, in a nutshell, I calculated it. I said 1.2 for each of the one from Netherlands and the one from here, 800. And he agreed. The Holy Spirit revealed to me later that the money given to him for two cars is using it to buy three. But will I now go to the king and reveal the secret? What concerns me? What gain would that bring to me? What am I bringing up? And this is a man in the church 
of the most holy man of the city who was preaching different gospel to them and preaching another gospel to the king where he's getting his source of income that is making him to tie the people they are not knowing that even the people he's teaching wrong doctrine the devil is making them wiser than him I can't forget, a mechanic. When I brought the three vehicles, I realized that if a station wagon was the third one, that one belongs to him. The same money. I acted and I, I try not to act foolishly because the king never discussed with me. I wasn't there when he was given the money. But the Spirit of God is a revealer of the secrets. But how do you see his life? Will he be would that make him better than uh, he now converted that station wagon? Clinker better than the one from Netherlands. Cleaner than that. He didn't tell me that one belongs to him. He told me the king wanted the three. I later saw and realized that the third one was his. And they call themselves Christians. These are the practices of so many Christians today. The devil deceived them. Total salvation is full of truth. No lying tongue, no deceit there. No foolishness. Those things are the ones that the devil will use against us if we are not careful. I later ran away from him. When I ran, because I think when we went to bring the vehicle after clearing from the port, on our way back, I was ministering to him. I took time to minister to him because I've realized that is living a fake life. I talked to him from Lagos to Abelkut, our destination. And after that, I decided not to have anything to do with him. Because it's so wayward. But his pastor won't know, he won't see this. As long as they are following him like Mumu, they are pretending, living a, a life of pretense. There is no pretense in the package of salvation. Only pretense in a repackage box of salvation or pot of salvation. So let's read. For it is always with me. 99. I have more inside than all my teachers because your decree are my meditation. Your decree means your style of life, your instruction. Your instruction, your guide, your by the Holy Spirit, leading me. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. I understand more than the others because I obey your precept. I have kept my feet from every evil path to follow your word. I have not turned from your judgment, for you yourself have instructed me. Something was telling me I should go back. I said, well, How can I do that? I wasn't there. I was not invited. It was the one that liaised with the king. He only knew I was traveling and he sent me to buy those vehicles. And I minimized what I charged him to the glory of God. I, Because of my conscience, I never valued the vehicle. I remember 1.2 for the left hand from Netherlands. Declaring the buying everything and 800 or 850 for the one from here. Both the buying, declaring everything. Clean vehicles. Now, verse 102. I have not turned from your judgment, for you yourself have instructed me how sweet your word is to my taste sweeter than money to my mouth i gain understanding 
from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every false way. I hate every false way. This is where we're going to stop today, you know, another time with Jesus Christ. What is total salvation? God never sleep nor slumber. We have to work out our salvation. Work out means from time to time, check yourself. Am I still on track? Have I missed it? Have I done well? Have I not been distracted? Have I not been misled? Have I not been misfired? Have I not missed it? What you need to correct? Nobody will do it for you. Work out your salvation. Don't every time say, God will help me. No. Where you need to help yourself, help yourself. What you need to throw away, throw them away. In the boat of Jonah, the people, when they call upon God and no answer, they started throwing. It wasn't any prophet who prophesied to them, throw all your belongings into the sea. No. Stop looking for prophets. They cannot help themselves, talk less of helping you. They can only use you to bring gain to themselves. The spirit that brings gain, the spirit of divination. Be independent. What is total salvation? A total salvation includes independence, freedom. Independence. You can hear directly from God. You can talk to your father. As you say father to you, you say father to me. As your geo is claiming that he's closer to God, so you are closer. Even where we read now, I am, let me read it. I have more insight than all my teachers. I have more insight, more understanding. What they are delivering to you, improve on it. You know better than them. And you do better than them. When they will be dying, you will be living. When they will be saying there's a casting now, you'll be saying there's a lifting up. And then they will know that truly you have gotten it right. God bless you. Father, we bless your name. We worship you. For this insight you are bringing to us. About total salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. And you have given it to us undiluted. But there are some miscreants who are repackaging Christianity to suit their own purpose, to mislead people, and to keep people under bondage, and to let them remain their slaves. Father, you are not happy with all this. And by so doing, the devil has been their masters. All those that have listened to us today, and those that will come across this program, Holy Spirit, open their eyes, enlarge their hearts, give them understanding, give them insights, and give them humility. It takes humility to receive the word of God. So that on the last days, they and us will be happy. The job of the Lord will bring happiness to us. Mm -hmm. And the testimony of Jesus will be the gift of our prophecy. Mm -hmm. So I prophesy upon you, it is well with you mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. It is well with you wherever you go this week. Mm -hmm. It is well with your family. It is well with your hope, <coughs> your home. It is well with everything around you in the name of Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus beautiful name we have prayed amen and amen god bless you you are welcome